one man against the ultimate power of nature. Chasing Niagara, December 25th on Red Bull TV. It all goes in the same bin in my mind. Trees improve the quality of the air we breathe. They stabilize our hills and they clean the water that we drink. Once I realized that I could make a living climbing trees, trees became my life. Can I get it all clear? Hit it! All clear. From the world's crowded urban jungles to its vast old growth forests, a tribe of specialized tree surgeons climb high into the canopy. Fire in the hole, guys. You're clear, Will. Their mission, defend the world's trees. It's not an environment that's been made safe for humans. Without a safety net, they risk it all on every climb. Will Kumjian and his crew of tree guardians do the work that few others can. Woo! Saving these ancient giants for future generations. That's my job. That's what I do. This is my life. Pretty amazing. No place in the world I would rather be. Will, you have the GPS? Uh, yeah. Right on. I moved to Oregon when I was 18 to go to college, and then I left college and I started working as a gardener and then as an arborist, and trees became my life. Will Kumjian is leading the way for a new breed of tree doctors. By combining technical rock climbing skills with a passion for conservation, he is redefining what it means to be an arborist. So when I walk through like a grove of trees or a forest, I don't feel like I'm just looking at a bunch of green blobs. To me, each of those trees have a personality, and I can tell sort of how they're doing in their life and how they relate to the other trees around them. Uh, what do you got on GPS right now? So I'm pretty sure this should get us at least within the grove. Yeah. We're doing good. Yeah. Today, Will is searching for a pristine grove of trees in the massive Mount Hood National Forest. Located in the American Pacific Northwest, Mount Hood National Forest claims more than one million acres of trees. It is one of the most productive ecosystems on Earth. Rising over 11,000 feet above the forest floor, Mount Hood is Oregon's highest peak. In the shadow of this glaciated volcano, 200-year-old trees grow more than 300 feet high. Yeah, why don't you maybe grab the tape and start doing some diameter measurements? I'm gonna walk around with the laser. Cool. Will is joined by longtime friend and fellow arborist, Brian French. They're hoping to find and record Oregon's largest Pacific silver fir. Where is that really tall one that you were talking about that it's, we, it's we spotted this out? Way. Wow, yeah, that's a nice tree. Yeah. That's a really nice looking tree. I just got 154 plus 17. It's 
better than that. Is it? It is. Do you want to just pull that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this one's just about 13 and 5 inches. In addition to their jobs, Will and Brian run a nonprofit organization whose mission is to register Oregon's biggest trees in hopes of protecting them. Hey guys. By mid afternoon, fellow arborists arrive to assist in the climb. How you doing? Good <laughs> time, you guys. I know, right? Yeah, oh, man. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, too. <laughs> we found a good one. Oh, yeah. I mean, not only is it a big tree, but it's like, oh, it's it's just mint. It's like this perfect straight column with, like, nice oh. crown. It's a proud tree. Get a throw ball set up. We'll uh, start taking some volleys. There's only one way to determine if this silver fir is a record breaker. And it begins with an ascent of at least 20 stories. I think we have a pretty good location of fire from right here. You think? Um, There's a lot of brush in the way. There is. It's a dense crown, so I'm not going to get super ambitious. Ooh, I didn't get any kind of height. OK, fire in the hole, guys. You're clear, Will. Nice shot! This specific type of climbing, climbing in really big conifers like this, is a very unique skill set. This is not a field for people that like to play things fast and loose. They say there's old climbers and there's bold climbers, but there's no old, bold climbers. It's not an environment that's been made safe for humans. The things that you really worry about are just not paying attention and just making some stu stupid mistake. You clip your carabiner into the wrong thing and you only have to do that once. Brian to Will, do you copy? Yeah, what's up, Brian? I'm gonna start gearing up so I can head up. Brian's up next. Although they climb around 200 trees together each year, there's nothing routine about the job. I started out scared of heights just the same as anybody else, but if you do it every day, if that's your work and you know your office is at height, you get very used to being at height. But then, you know, if something goes wrong, the fear of heights can definitely come back, and it can come back with a vengeance. Brian, I'm going to uh, start lowering this tape, eh? Yeah, to the left of that one? Yeah, right there. Right there, Will. Perfect. Nice. OK. Go ahead. All right, I have it in hand. So uh, let me know when you're ready for me to pull it tight. Go. OK. I'm going to take it up, and I'm going to measure the tippy top, which looks like another three or four feet. OK. All right, I reckon that's about the tip right there. If it's as big as, as we think it is, this could be the largest tree of this species in the state of Oregon. Anybody want to take any guess as to what the final number is? I'm going to go with uh, 204.5. Pretty close. 205.1. Nice. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> it looks yeah. like it's going to be the champion to me. Biggest Pacific silver fir in Oregon. One thing that I think a lot of folks forget is that this is what a tree is supposed to look like. When we come to places like this, we get to see what the world looks like on its own. Leave nature to its own devices and it does incredible things. Man, 
great day. It was unreal to be in it. I mean, that tree is amazing. One of the things that I love about this is that we get to sort of remind people that nature is amazing and to care about its preservation. I have this awesome community. We use the term uh, tree tribe to describe our group. This work is so hard, it's so dangerous and takes so much out of you. I have all of these great friends that share in that and that can sympathize with that. We're gonna put him on a, on a rope treadmill. We're gonna have a Tonight's tree tribe gathering is also a going away toast for Will. His specialized skills take him on jobs around the world. I worked in South Africa, Indonesia. Last year, I was in Madagascar in New Zealand. And I'm leaving a week from today to go to Hong Kong. Uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. southeastern China, Hong Kong is one of the most densely populated places on Earth. Wow. That's really incredible. Still, people here share a deep respect for their ancestry and nature. In an ever-changing urban jungle, Hong Kong's trees are a touchstone for conservation. Old trees, particularly old trees, are given a lot of respect in Hong Kong. You see a lot of shrines, a lot of incense sticks at the base of these trees, especially old ficus trees. I love that. I think that's awesome. So you can really see this tree has very little room. I mean, this is somebody's house right here that it's growing right into. This is somebody else's house right here. The tire is actually doing a really good job of uh, keeping the tree and the temple away so that the cambium can keep dividing and growing. That makes me happy. At the heart of this island city, concrete skyscrapers tower over its prized banyan trees. For over a century, trees which began as seedlings sprouting from cracks in the masonry have grown massive root structures that have become part of the city walls. Today, over 1,200 trees tower above the busy streets and sidewalks below. So we need to raise up just a little bit here, a little bit right here. If we can take it right there and preserve the branch, I think that's gonna be the best thing to do. All right. so yeah, so just this, this a good arborist needs to look out, look out for the needs of people, but they also need to understand trees and really be looking out for what's in the tree's best interest. The wall trees are a huge source of pride for people in Hong Kong. People love that they're these native trees that are flourishing under really unlikely circumstances, that they're just able to adapt and overcome. I mean, it's incredible. You won't see that anywhere else. Um, we're gonna need one person that's sort of in charge of the, the tail of my rope, because if there's too much slack, 
one of those double-decker buses will come and clip the end of my rope and make a very bad day for me. A difficult yeah, climb and crowded ground, city streets make this job particularly challenging. Although the job required a 6,000-mile commute, local tree doctor John Picker brought Will in to lead the trimming of the historic trees. In Hong Kong, the level of tree climbing and arboriculture is still in development, and so when we really need to get a difficult job done, we, we contact Will, ask him to come over. He's a smart climber, intelligent climber, and uh, he's able to move around the tree a lot faster than most people. Before I go up into a tree, I just sort of take a minute and just try to let all the voices die down and do a bit of a gut check and make sure that my head is in it. Every situation is different. There's no formula. It totally varies from one day to another. Everything depends on the tree and it depends on the, the scenario. Can you uh, run traffic control on me? Let me know when I'm clear. Okay. There's plenty of opportunity to really screw things up if you're not careful. In order to do good pruning, you have to get way out to the tips, to the spots where the stems are two inches thick. And be able to work there. To shed branches, to shed stems. That's a normal thing for a tree, but if we have big trees over a crowded environment like what we have at Forbes Street, we don't want that. Okay, you guys, I'm ready for a chainsaw. Will removes limbs that can weigh over 300 pounds, a serious risk to people and property more than 70 feet below. Eddie, when we're cutting, you're stopping traffic, okay? Okay. I just try to be very focused. If you're distracted, you can make mistakes, and mistakes can have really bad consequences if you're running a chainsaw attached to rope. taken away the hazards and given the people in the neighborhood peace of mind that the trees are safe and sound. It's a really huge honor to be chosen to work on these old and valuable trees. Three months later, Will and Brian return to Mount Hood National Forest to begin one of the most unusual jobs they've ever been part of. In order to preserve this virgin track of forest, they will first help knock down dozens of its trees. Right now, we're getting set up to drop this Douglas fir over here. Okay. Will and Brian first rig the trees with heavy-duty yeah. cables that will allow the dozers to uproot the trees and control the direction of their fall. What do you think? About up here? Yeah. 
Could you uh, pull my climb line? Yeah, I'm gonna pull it back here. When I work with Brian, I've been climbing with him for so long. I know his approach to things, and he knows my approach to things. I'm satisfied with that. Give me a minute to get out of the way. This one's gonna be interesting. Will and Brian are the expert climbers in an environmental tree tipping project for the Oregon Forestry Service. The fallen trees help create new salmon habitat in the river. As salmon return upriver to spawn and die here, their carcasses will help nourish the entire forest ecosystem. All this going in the river, some old bridge pieces, some uh, root wads taken from a tree farm, all designed to be better salmon habitat, slow the water down, prevent erosion, make the salmon come home. never ceases to amaze me like the weird places that I end up in this line of work. That's good, right there, yeah. Awesome. We've done a lot of cool projects over the years, but like this really like was one of the coolest projects that I've worked on in my career. Like who pulls trees over with giant cables. I mean, who does that? I'm okay, no worries. Brian. Nice route, dude. How you doing, man? Trees are my livelihood. Everything I do is about trees. Oh, man, I could just stay right here. That would be all right. I get to see amazing views. I get to go places that literally no person has ever gone before, see things that nobody's ever seen before. That was really fun. I love this work. Like, I can't imagine doing anything else. The more time I spend in a tree per day, the better I feel. I'm always happiest in the tree. 